Yes, welcome back to Entrepreneurship Tuesday. I go by the name of Bai Moses or it's Bai Mo on every social media platform. And we are coming uh, to, towards the end of this. We have covered everything from culinary uh, to e-commerce to music business. But all this is nothing without security. That's why we had to bring uh, Martin Mungai, who is the Sales and Operations Director at KGT, who specializes in security scanning in particular. Karibu sana. Thank you very much. All right, your camera is number four. I think you saw the previous interview. Absolutely. You know the drill. Let's go ahead with it. Uh -huh. yep. Thank you very much for having me. Mm -hmm. uh, as I said, it's a pleasure. Mm -hmm. And I'm here to demystify security. Uh -huh. To show you that it's more than inconveniencing, but it's mm -hmm. a necessity. Uh -huh. And I mean, security starts with every one of us. Security starts with every one of us. Absolutely. That is our first topic of conversation. When you say security starts with every one of us, uh, uh, neg the Negro culture, uh, if you listen to hip-hop music, yeah? yes. snitching is, uh, is an adult. Absolutely. It's not allowed. Yeah. Do you think this is where the problem starts with us? I, I sort of think so, mm -hmm. because you, you'll find people seeing something that is out of place, mm -hmm. something that should not actually be as it is, mm -hmm. and then you decide to keep mum about it. Uh -huh. So you say nothing about it, and uh -huh. then... I mean, the kids pick it up. Mm, it becomes their new norm. And the mm -hmm. thing is, with security, mm -hmm. if you do not disclose everything, uh -huh. the repercussions are immeasurable. Uh -huh. You cannot live with them. And you've seen this in Living Color. Absolutely. You've seen this in your experience. Absolutely. KGT, what does it stand for? Uh, KGT stands for Kensington General Traders. Mm -hmm. uh, it's headquartered in London. Mm -hmm. Our offices are at Five Old Bay in London. Mm -hmm. But we distribute for a manufacturer called Rapid Scan Systems. Mm -hmm. So we do the distributions in around 13 countries in the region of East Africa. Mm -hmm. So KGT has its way of working within the region. Mm -hmm. So myself, I work with KGT Kenya. Mm -hmm. So KGT Kenya Limited is actually a subsidiary and a partner to KGT UK Limited. Mm -hmm. We have part ownership and the head office has part ownership. All right. So uh, your focus is on security scanning? Absolutely. In particular, yes, mm -hmm. uh, it's a fully fledged security screening solutions provider. Mm -hmm. So, from our lowest equipment, and it's actually technology based. Mm -hmm. So, from our lo lowest equipment, it is a handheld metal detector. Mm -hmm. So, handheld metal detector. Every security guard in Nairobi or across the country has one nowadays. Which has been misused because <laughs> at this point, you can actually pick up a handheld metal detector down at River Road, uh -huh. and at least to some extent, it serves as a deterrent. Uh -huh. So. It works by, I mean, without boring its magnetism, so picks uh -huh. up anything that is ferrous. Uh -huh. So from a handheld metal detector uh -huh. all the way to occupied vehicle screening. So uh -huh. scanning of cargo containers, scanning mm -hmm. of occupied vehicles, mm -hmm. everything now in between. All right, so you're present at the ports, at the airports, and at buildings and malls as well. Absolutely, and how mm -hmm. we like to classify our market is that we have the regulated market and we have mm -hmm. the non-regulated market. Mm -hmm. In a layman's term, regulated are governed by regulation. So mm -hmm. if you have a farm, mm -hmm. The regulations for you to get a license or to mm -hmm. get certificates to operate mm -hmm. entails that you have equipment that is accepted and uh, confirmed by uh -huh. regulators. From a so, uh, no, verified supply. Absolutely, uh -huh. a verified supply. No, for for for, the, for instance, at the airport, mm -hmm. uh, the governing body is the Kenya Civil Aviation Authority. Mm -hmm. As KCA, we do not have like our own standards per se, so mm -hmm. we have to ride on the European Union mm -hmm. and Transport and Security, Security Administration, which is TSA, which mm -hmm. is by the USA. Right. So we actually borrow a lot from them. Mm -hmm. You must have heard of this uh, thing that everybody was singing about when uh, Kenya, uh, JKA was given the light, last point of departure, mm -hmm. meaning that you can actually fly direct to the US. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That comes with a lot of strings attached. Uh -huh. Among the strings attached is uh -huh. the sort of equipment that you have. All right. So those are the regulations. Uh -huh. So the non-regulated market says you have a hotel, you have a mall, you have a uh -huh. building, and you want to secure your, uh, your premises. Uh -huh. So either by baggage scanning, uh -huh. vehicle scanning. Mm -hmm. So you actually go and pick whatever it is that you want to pick and actually secure your equipment. So uh -huh. the difference between the regulated and the non-regulated market. All right. When we talk about security, uh, before we talk about the challenges that you face, uh, security has been, uh, the term has been misused so many times. It has been used as an excuse, uh, for lack of a better word, spy on people. What do you have to say about this? Uh, to some extent, it has some truth in that. Mm -hmm. And you spy on people when you do what? So mm -hmm. If you have ladies coming into your premises, mm -hmm. you tell them to open the handbag. Mm -hmm. We all know what goes on in the handbags of the ladies. Mm -hmm. So to some extent, that is sort of- Invasion of, of privacy. Uh -huh. Absolutely. So what do you do to, to, uh, to actually ensure that you actually check on whatever is coming in and mm -hmm. still protect the privacy of the person that's screening? Mm -hmm. 
you go technology. Uh -huh. So you put the bug in a baggage scanner. Uh -huh. And it only detects the unwanted stuff. It doesn't detect things they should want. Absolutely. Uh -huh. and it actually puts it in an image that is not revealing. Uh -huh. So it's, it's, it's basically organic, inorganic, and metal organic substances that will be in that bag. Uh -huh. So different color codings, green, uh -huh. orange, and blue. So all you see on your display are uh, colors. Absolutely. So that is why you guys want technology. Absolutely. And technology is helping uh, as much as it's being misused. It's also helping to, to protect the privacy uh, uh, of the people. And, and, and as, a, as, as a premises owner, mm -hmm. you, you would actually want to account for everything that is within your building. Mm -hmm. So and how do you do that? Mm -hmm. Once a scan is made of the uh, of whatever it is that you're scanning, mm -hmm. there's an autom uh, automated image archiving. Mm -hmm. So you have a record of whatever has come in. So uh -huh. even when something happens, mm -hmm. you're able to go back and, and track. try and track and uh -huh. trace back and see what exactly might exactly So happen. most of these uh, attacks we've had are very, very preventable. Absolutely. And uh -huh. uh, the reason they're preventable, mm -hmm. attacks are planned. Attacks are planned. They're planned. And if and something is planned, plan, you can reverse the plan. Absolutely. Uh -huh. And you don't plan by a day, you know, uh -huh. it's not a one day thing, uh -huh. and especially if it's a substantial attack, mm -hmm. you need to like lay down your foundation, you need to mm -hmm. like, observe the premises, how do guards behave, at all times is it most vulnerable, mm -hmm. so it's, the guys come over and over and over, so with mm -hmm. technology you're able to pick this up, mm -hmm. and you're able to actually prevent it, and nip it at the bud, even before it actually happens. Alright, there's uh, the issue of health, uh, so many people are, are scared of these magnetic fields, uh, the radio waves and the x-rays and everything. Uh, what do you have to say about I this? I don't blame people being scared of actually this stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but from where I sit and from where professionals sit within the security screening industry, we know the safety measures that all manufacturers actually take. Mm -hmm. And that is why there is actually a list of equipment that even the West actually advocate for. Go for this kind of equipment. You all know how much the Chinese have actually paid for mm -hmm. our market. So what happens is that... Uh, Just uh, use this as well? All right. Uh -huh. uh, so what happens is that each manufacturer, because it's X-rays that people are afraid of, mm -hmm. and we all know that X-rays will not penetrate lead. Mm -hmm. so for instance, when you're going for, for a dental health, uh, health check mm -hmm. and you need X-raying done on you, mm -hmm. there's normally a sheet that's actually placed on your chest. Uh -huh. That's lead. Uh -huh. So X-rays will not penetrate lead. Uh -huh. So And that is why we always advocate for any end user of the equipment uh -huh. to ensure that whatever they're buying is quality. And mm -hmm. we, we have ways of actually verifying that they're actually buying mm -hmm. a, a quality equipment. There's a list of suppliers. Absolutely. Uh -huh. And the equipment should be fully covered with lead. Mm -hmm. That means that there'll be no leakage uh -huh. of, uh, of X-rays. Any X-rays. Uh -huh. Any X-rays that is actually uh, any X-ray that leaks out mm -hmm. is, is actually the ones that I mean, even where we are, mm -hmm. the microphones, the lights, everything. Uh -huh. There's radiation all over. Uh -huh. But this is radiation that we can actually live with. Uh -huh. So the problem will be an equipment that is actually emitting more. Mm -hmm. radioactivity mm -hmm. that is actually permissible. So the best way to cap this, uh, what you're saying is buy from a trusted supplier. Buy from a trusted supplier. Mm -hmm. And not only that, mm -hmm. the trusted supplier might be good. Mm -hmm. So for instance, you can buy a Mercedes Benz. Mm -hmm. It has uh, a certain allowable mileage. It has to go and then mm -hmm. it has to be serviced. Mm -hmm. So the supplier must not only supply to you, mm -hmm. but he has to have a routine of uh, I mean, a, a routine maintenance mechanism uh -huh. to ensure, number one, equipment is working, obviously, for it to be able mm -hmm. to do whatever it's doing, and that there's no leakage whatsoever. All right, so, so that you get value the supplier should be very credible yep. in terms yep. of supply yep. and uh, also maintenance. Absolutely. Do you provide training for the staff that are going to handle your equipment? Yeah, we, we normally provide training. Mm -hmm. uh, all our engineers mm -hmm. are certified by the manufacturer, mm -hmm. trained at the manufacturer's premises, so mm -hmm. that will be in Malaysia, in the UK, and the US. Mm -hmm. uh, they're trained the trainers. Mm -hmm. So once I supply an equipment to you, number one, I'll train your operators. Mm -hmm. Number two, I'll also we also organize seminars for mm -hmm. anybody with our equipment, mm -hmm. obviously for efficiency and mm -hmm. for health and safety bit of it, mm -hmm. so that you know exactly what it is that you're getting yourself into. Mm -hmm. And, and, and this is important for a couple of things. Number one, you get value for your money mm -hmm. because you do not only look at the price of the equipment out of the box. Mm -hmm. The equipment should serve you for the next 10 to 15 years. Mm -hmm. So it, the, the, the greater worry for the end user should be what happens for the 10 to 15 years. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want to sell you an equipment for $10,000 mm -hmm. and you're spending $10,000 per year for the next 15 years. <laughs> it, makes no sense sense sense. it makes no economic sense. Yeah. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, we have people who are already caught in this because mm -hmm. number one is lack of awareness. Mm -hmm. Number two is, I mean, 
the, the mentality that you always want to get the cheapest thing. Mm -hmm. And cheap is expensive to some of this. Mm -hmm. uh, Especially with sensitive equipment like absolutely, this. Uh -huh. Absolutely, absolutely. Right. Yeah. So uh, the reason I ask is because uh, the guards at most of these buildings will just pass that metal detector like this. Yeah, and, and, and it beeps <laughs> and, and it goes. It beeps. It beeps yeah, quiet, so goes, you don't know goes. which, you don't know what is the sign that there's something dangerous. Because it beeps you pass. It doesn't beep you pass. Uh, I, I, I don't, the thing I would like also to advise the people is that the 100 meter detector is a secondary device. Uh -huh. We have levels of security screening. Uh -huh. So we have the walkthrough metal detector. So it's an arc where we just walk past. Mm -hmm. And then depending on the walkthroughs that you have, mm -hmm. the ind it, it actually indicates where the level of threat is at. Uh -huh. So say for instance, somebody has a pistol. Uh -huh. So, and you've actually placed at the normal place, which is uh -huh. well, here for everybody. So mm -hmm. if you go through the walkthrough metal detector and LED lighting, appears at that place. So the guard who has not this handled metal detector mm -hmm. now knows where exactly to pinpoint. So mm -hmm. it comes to you directly, says that, boss, you have let's something see. over here. Uh -huh. Let's see what, what's going on in there. All right. But as you said, it has been, it has been misused. Uh -huh. We have equipment that beeps uh -huh. if you have a metal, if you don't have a metal. Uh -huh. but, I mean, so I, you I don't know what's the difference. Absolutely. Uh -huh. so but I, there's I, room for improvement always. There is definitely room for improvement. Right. And the mm -hmm. good thing is that now people are becoming sensitized. Uh -huh. Investors, owners of premises, know what it is that they're actually looking for. Mm -hmm. Because unfortunately, uh, we are a target as a country. Mm -hmm. uh, that is very unfortunate. Absolutely. But it's a reality that we have to live with. Absolutely. Uh -huh. And we have to work with that because mm -hmm. the security is dynamic. Uh -huh. It's not static. It uh -huh. changes. So threats that were there 10 years ago mm -hmm. are not the same that are here mm -hmm. presently. Uh -huh. Like for instance, the telescope mirrors made a lot of sense back then. Mm -hmm. You come in with your vehicle and then the guard goes and Yes, to it doesn't make sense to me. But, but right now, I mean, Tact changed. Initially, improvised explosive devices were actually placed underneath the vehicle. Mm -hmm. But now research shows that around 8% uh -huh. of the IEDs will actually be beneath the vehicle. So mm -hmm. you're actually missing the 92%. Mm -hmm. So so this is just a scare. It's like having a scare, scarecrow in a farm. Ab absolutely, and it will not work. All right. Absolutely. I'd like to get your opinion on something. Uh, uh, as a specialist in security, uh, Donald Trump, the president of the United States, uh, wanted to build a wall. Yeah. Uh, it's going to cost uh, the taxpayers so much money. Uh, in Kenya, we have had a situation where we had to build a wall as well. Yeah. And uh, the guys I went to school with, <laughs> they were telling me that uh, what uh, an, a 100-kilometer wall can do one drone can do. Is there truth in this? There's some truth in that, mm -hmm. and I will not discredit the wall actually, because mm -hmm. number one, you're actually looking at two different modes of actually securing your premises or whatever mm -hmm. it is that you're securing. The physical barrier, the wall forms a physical barrier. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? No, the thing is, what do you do when you have that one? Mm -hmm. So do you have snipers? Uh -huh. Anybody who tries to scale the wall to shoot him? Uh -huh. That's one thing. Uh -huh. The drone will actually pick up from further, uh, I mean, so, so you, you actually see people advancing before they mm -hmm. get to the wall. Mm -hmm. But again, what do you do after? You actually detect them. All right. So the drone and the wall do the same thing. They, they, they sort of <laughs> complement each other. Uh -huh. And it's, it's actually a matter of marrying the technologies. Uh -huh. So you, you actually have a high-end technology and uh -huh. you have the physical barrier. Uh -huh. So you actually, I mean, you see the good thing with the physical barrier, you're actually telling the, the, the person actually coming to your side, you're not supposed to cross this line. Uh -huh. So if you actually it's cross this line... It's a message. Abs absolutely. All right. But the drone should be able to pick it up. And now, with that intelligence, you're mm -hmm. now able to secure your perimeter, even without necessarily mm -hmm. having the wall. All right. So uh, the biggest concern when it comes to security with Kenyans is always the issue of time. Uh, do you guys try to come up with innovations on how you can save on time at these checkpoints? Uh, number one, all the security will, will be inconveniencing. Mm -hmm. But again, uh, again, you look at security the, has to come at a price. It has at to a come cost. at a price. Uh -huh. Not only the monetary price, uh -huh. but also the time factor. Because mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, you, you you have to look at the not not unfortunate actually. Mm -hmm. It's the risk benefit analysis. Mm -hmm. So what are you trying to secure? Mm -hmm. Of paramount importance that no life shall be lost. Mm -hmm. So, but as manufacturers, the equipment are getting better. Mm -hmm. Whereby we had an explosive and narcotics detection technology that will take maybe 25 seconds to actually give you a false, uh, to, to give you either a positive or, or a negative reading. Mm -hmm. Nowadays it has come down to eight seconds. Mm -hmm. But even, I mean, look at it. When you go to a mall, a guard will have to come, walk around, mm -hmm. open the boot, looking at absolutely nothing. <laughs> so it will be more than the eight seconds, mm -hmm. whereby you can actually do the same thing. The guard will still go around, swapping whatever it is that you want. So at the door knobs, mm -hmm. at, the, at the steering wheel, I mean, where you love it, actually have come into contact with uh, your vehicle mm -hmm. and then slots the sample trap into the equipment that actually looking at and gives you a positive or a negative reading. Mm -hmm. So with regards to the time that is taken to actually mm -hmm. 
analyze if there's a threat or not, mm -hmm. it has actually come quite down. And it, it and has actually come down, and it's yet to go even lower. Abs absolutely. With improvement absolutely. in technology. Absolutely. The last big question is, uh, most of our viewers are owners of SMEs. Uh, they, they're involved in the small and middle income businesses. And uh, the question is, how can they, they, they don't see a connection between your services and their business. They consider their businesses small. Is that connection? Is that uh, where you come in? You see, a small business, a, a business is a business. A business, business. is a business, small, number one. Small, mm -hmm. Number one. And without a secure environment, mm -hmm. regardless of how big or how small their business is, mm -hmm. then you'll not get the returns on your business. All right. So, first and foremost, it starts from the government, because mm -hmm. we also interact quite largely with the government in regards mm -hmm. of securing our borders, securing our ports, securing uh, all, all, all our common infrastructure. But even as a business, you see, right now, security has been brought down to the level of, of even a CCTV, mm -hmm. intelligent CCTVs. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, for any business that is out there, it has to be secure. You uh -huh. have to feel safe. Uh -huh. Otherwise, I mean, you love a business, but you're not able to get to work. Mm -hmm. So security is in paramount. Term, it's paramount. Mm -hmm. Even the big four agendas, uh -huh. uh, that uh, agenda that Uhuru had, uh -huh. the Jubilee government uh -huh. rather had, Security was not mentioned as one of them. Uh -huh. I think it was food, food, food security. Uh -huh. affordable that was building. one aspect of security. Ab food security. Ab absolutely, mm -hmm. but not all of them. Uh -huh. Without the place being safe, uh -huh. nothing can. Move. Nothing can move. Absolutely. From the music business, From the music business. <laughs> to the absolutely to the culinary because business. I, I mean, music business would go events in Mombasa, but uh -huh. then if there's a travel sanction, uh -huh. what happens? Nobody is going to go to the event. Absolutely. Especially the, they're the biggest beneficiaries of good security systems. Absolutely. Because they've been crowds together. Sure. Thank you very much for coming. How can they get a hold of your services? Uh, your camera is number four. Uh, just give them social media or the numbers or the physical location. Uh, we have, we, we, we have, you know, KGT Kenya is based at uh, Jomo Kenyatta International Airport at Cargo Terminal Signal Aviation Building. Mm -hmm. Our website, which is highly descriptive, uh, digitalized, and with all the videos and all the products that we actually supply is www.kgtsecurity.com mm -hmm. and uh, on visiting it's, it's a very interactive website whereby if you have any queries uh, you just shoot down a, a, a query to us and mm -hmm. one of our support teams will actually get back to you and obviously now tailor make a solution as per your requirements all right one question is coming in and this one uh, the question is do you just sell or you can offer temporary service like say i have a festival for a weekend uh, can you see, can I get the equipment for a weekend and then get it back to you? Absolutely. Initially, we were just going full throttle selling because uh -huh. they're not, they're, they're a bit pricey equipment. Mm -hmm. But what, what we do now, because we have partners that we partner with, security mm -hmm. firms that we actually partner with, we can even hire for events. Mm -hmm. So we have leasing options. Mm -hmm. We have hire, uh, the hiring option where they say mm -hmm. maybe like a Koroga festival and they want actually to, to do whatever it is uh -huh. they want to do, then they can actually be able to hire from us and they can utilize our services for the events. Thank you very much, Mr. Martin Mungai. Thank, Thank you very much for what you're doing for the country Absolutely. and to the country at large. And uh, keep securing Thank you very the country. Much. All Thank right, you. yes, we've come to the end of Entrepreneurship Tuesday. I go by the name of Barry Moses or it's by one of social media platform. Tomorrow is Queen's Wednesday. Be sure to tune in. We'll be having Queen's in the building. Uh, we'll be having our WCWs as well. Don't go nowhere. Don't touch that dial because we have a lot lined up for you in the course of the day as well and don't miss the repeat at 2 p.m.